Hi, I'm Corey Redekop, Director of Policy with the Burnaby Board of Trade, and I'm joined here today by Mayreen Chowdhury, who is running in the by-election to join Burnaby City Council this month. How are you doing, Mayreen? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me today. We, uh, we're looking forward to it. We're, we're the Chamber of Commerce here in, in Burnaby, and, and we work to support our local businesses and employers, uh, foster a competitive environment uh, that's sustainable and successful for all, and we really serve to be a, a catalyst, a convener, and a champion for, for the local business community. And that's why with an election coming up, we were keen to to create a platform for, for our members in the community to, to hear information from all the candidates. We invited everybody to, to do a video with us to share why they're running, uh, answer a few questions and, and give the voters a little bit more information. So let's get started if we, if we could. The, um, did you wanna take a few moments to, to share a little bit about who you are and why you're running and, and uh, what your background experience might bring to council? Uh, okay, um, just a little bit, uh, I'll, I'll just keep a brief intro. Um, thank you so much for having me. This is not my first time, uh, you know, be, uh, being uh, here talking to somebody from Board of Trade, and I really appreciate all the work that you do in making that connection for us. Um, uh, I have been living in Burnaby for the last five years. Uh, I ran in the 2018 uh, City Council election also. I ran in uh, last year's provincial uh, election also, and this is uh, going to be my third time running. And if I do get elected, I would be the first Muslim uh, woman to be elected in Burnaby City Council. So that's pretty uh, amazing. Um, so a little bit about my, my background is uh, I've got an MBA from University of Illinois. So I have a business degree. I uh, come from a household of entrepreneurs. Uh, you know, my mother is also ran her own business. My brother currently runs a digital marketing agency um, also. So, you know, I've, I've, I've had experience uh, with small business as well as myself working in a bigger organization um, and, uh, you know, having that exposure. So I have a really good, you know, I, I, so I really appreciate the work that you do. Uh, the reason that I have gotten involved uh, in running for uh, public office is because I think there is a big, huge gap that needs to be filled. Uh, we need, uh, you know, representation across the broad or demographics need to be represented in all uh, different aspects of, uh, you know, Burnaby is such a diverse city itself. And I feel that on city council, that is not really truly represented. And that is my biggest uh, thing to be running for city council. And also I rent over here in Burnaby and affordable housing, childcare, all of these issues. Uh, have been a pain point for myself and my friends. So I'm here today, uh, you know, just to answer some of your questions and uh, hopefully get your vote. Okay, well, perfect. Thanks for that. Uh, to get a sense of on, on some of your perspectives on things, we have a couple of questions we were wanting to ask all, all the candidates uh, across a, a number of different categories that are top of mind for some of our, mm -hmm. our members and our business community. So one of the ones that I'll, I'll maybe I'll, I'll start, start off with, which is always a popular a popular topic uh, around here, is, is transportation and traffic and, and the movement throughout the city. We're Burnaby, obviously. There's there's movement within our within the city itself, and, and as the center of the region, there's yes. lots of movement through uh, through our, our city. We um, the city's currently undergoing a, an update to the tr transportation plan, which would be something that you, if you were elected, would be voting on as, as a councillor. Um, do you have any thoughts on what your priorities for improving improving transportation uh, within Burnaby and through Burnaby for not just people getting around to the shops and services, but the movement of goods and 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 business business movement as well? What are your what are your thoughts on improving transportation and traffic here? Yeah. So and I, and I think um, so for me, I think the the transportation plan is is a good first step. Uh, in uh, getting, you know, in, in moving towards that direction. That's, uh, you know, there's still a lot of things that need to be worked out, a lot of details uh, that need to be worked out. And I think what needs to now happen is that, yes, we have a broad transportation plan. What we need to do is we need to in engage with the end users, the people who are going to be impacted uh, from different communities. You know, like you said, we have to engage the business community. We have to engage, you know, um, the, the cycling community, we have to engage all of these different people to really see what we need in Burnaby uh, and and then make sure those needs are then met through this plan. Um, and I think, you know, um, you know, there's there's a big, huge gap here where we need to look at the infrastructure going forward. 
uh, into the future? Do you know, Hana? How do we scale up that infrastructure to cater for the for the increase in population that would be happening, and from that also the increase in businesses that would be happening over the next five, 10, 20 years. Um, and those are all the things that you know we need to look at, and that would be what my focus would be. Uh, ending up in city council. And the big thing for me would be, you know, having those 15 minutes city uh, communities here in Burnaby, which then encourages small businesses uh, to be available for people just on a walking distance uh, kind of uh, space. And I think that those are, that's the future where we should be heading to make, to have more sustainable uh, society. Okay, great. Thanks. Thanks for that. The, um, the part of what how that will will shape out, I guess, will be around planning and, and zoning and, and how the city grows and develops, which, which is really a, a fundamental role for, for for city council. Do you have any thoughts on? And, and you said I think you, you said you were you've been in Burnaby for five years, okay? And and looking over that time and and into the into the past, how the city has handled growth thus far. And do you have any any thoughts on where where we should be looking to go as we as we increase our population and, and continue to mature? Um, how should we be growing as a city in the next, say, 10 or 20 years? I think, I think our focus should be to make Burnaby more sustainable. I think, right, like I've been here for five years and I live in the metro town area. And for the first two years, I didn't have a car. But the issue is if you go live anywhere else in Burnaby, you need a car. So except for this metro town area or, you know, Brentwood, you anywhere else. So I think we need to now try to get away from being a very car centric uh, city to being more easily accessible city by transit, by bike lanes, and you know those kind of things, and that's going to flourish not just you know um, our, uh, our our businesses, but that's also going to help flourish more tourism around this area because it becomes the because we have beautiful green spaces here, we've got beautiful hiking trails here. So if we can make those accessible to people, then we will have more people coming in here as visitors also, and not just you know people living here. Uh, and I think we need to look at from a holistic perspective just to make the city more sustainable for even the people who are living here. And that again comes back to having you know having an infrastructure in place which caters for those needs. And well. I'm going to pick up a little bit on on that about kind of trying to create. I'm hearing kind of trying to create areas where you can live and, and shop and work and you, and you can kind of stay in a complete community. And that's been something that we've talked about in, in the past, and that's been getting some attention around uh, making it so people can live and have amenities and goods and services close at hand. Um, one of the, the 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 flip side of that might be an area that we might have some concern. So I'd be interested in your thought around um, moving moving businesses closer to people is one thing moving people closer closer to businesses might be a challenge we're looking at industrial land so one of the areas that um uh, Burnaby has a, has a decent supply of is is, is industrial lands down in, in big bet in big bend uh and some of the uh, uh still creek and, and and lake city some of these areas where there's there's spaces for businesses um uh, that are maybe a bit larger have different uses um one of our concerns might be as we as we mature in residential areas, start to encroach on those spots where those businesses would go. Um, what do you have any thoughts on how how we manage that, uh, creating complete communities and, and accommodating the growth in population without losing industrial lands, which are what create our our industry base, our jobs, our, our employment, and forcing those companies to move out to other jurisdictions. So, so basically, what I, I think, what you know. I agree with you, and I, and I, and the vision that I have for the city is that you know because I live here in Burnaby, and I would really like the people who you know you should be able to live, you know, maximum 15, 20 minutes from where you work. So when you talk about these industrial spaces, I think we need to we need to keep them and also help those businesses develop more and bring in more businesses, so people who live in Burnaby can can, you know, can work in Burnaby because right now I have to go downtown and that is the reason I live where I live. You know, we, we've become a suburb and we should get away from being, being a suburb city. We're not. So, you know, to have our own identity, to have our own sustainable uh, community, I think it is very important to have businesses and keep the jobs within Burnaby and provide that opportunity to the residents of Burnaby. If I so that's the thing when I'm job searching and I'm looking at job, my first question is, where is this location? 
right? And that is a big, huge part in, you know, becomes a big, huge consideration for me personally, whether I would even interview for that job. If it's out in Langley or Delta, I don't want to interview for it. So if it's Burnaby, I'm, you know, for me then, you know, even if it's a less paying job, it becomes more attractive because it's it's convenient for me to, to live and work where I am. So I think, you know, that's the vision that I have and that's where I want the city to be, to be able to have and nurture all these businesses and give them that space uh, and provide for, you know, people who live here uh, a livelihood. Does that answer your question? Yeah, no, I, I, thanks. I think so. Yeah, the, uh, you, you mentioned that you're you're in Metro Town, and that, that's where where I am here. And one of the one of the issues that has been bubbling up a little bit lately, unfortunately, has been um, the issue of crime, and not just the high profile shootings in in the region, which are which are disturbing, um, but property crime, break and enters, kind of the things that grind a business owner when they come in in the morning and realize the the shop's been broken into or or something's been stolen from the car that was in the yard. Yeah. Do you have any, any comments on what can be done at the, at the city level? Because yeah, policing is something that, that, that the city would have its hands on. Do you have any, any comments on, on how as, as a, a council city this, and, and city should handle crime issues and, and these kind of property crime, business crime, to make sure that, that businesses feel that they're being proactively enforced and protected? Um, my, I, I think what we need to do, and then I you know, really would work with the RCMP to making sure that, you know, uh, we have, you know, things are aligned properly. And I, and I think they're doing a good job and we will make sure that, you know, I will make sure that, you know, they have the support that they need from the city uh, in, uh, you know, and, um, and also make sure that the businesses and any break-ins that are happening, uh, you know, people don't, f are not left hanging and uh, be that bridge for them to make sure that, you know, they can get back on their, on their feet quicker and help and support them in any way that we can uh, from the city. Yeah, I want to pivot to the, the issue of uh, climate and the environment. And um, for 15 years, the Board of Trade has been, been a, a leader in, in our, our sector around trying to push uh, that the environment and climate change is, is, mm -hmm. is a business issue. It's something that we need to be ahead of. What, do you, what are your thoughts on what the city as a, as a city government can do, should do um, to both combat uh, its own emissions and contributions to that, that problem and to mitigate any potential impact that might be coming down? Um, we, we have a lot of like, like we were talking about, you know, having the industrial area and businesses. I think what the city needs to do is also make sure that, you know, we're giving incentive to businesses and we're giving incentive to the industrial area and um, to go green and uh, and things like that. And I think it's very important uh, to, from a city perspective, to have these uh, things in place, have this kind of infrastructure in place, have you know all of this in place to support the businesses uh, to, so we can get towards green economy uh, and also to create jobs around, uh, you know, around green jobs in the community. Uh, there are a lot of initiatives that can uh, take place, and especially with the with the pandemic now, there's a lot of businesses that had to pivot. There's a lot of businesses that you know um, really had to close down. So, from a city perspective, we can help them, you know, um, start a new green business, or you know, we can provide those incentives, work with the board of trades to have those in incentives in place for them. Uh, and that's how we work towards having a greener uh, business and greener community and also um, take care of the environment, make sure the green spaces that we have here are protected. Uh, you know, they're, they're properly being taken care of and they're preserved and they're, uh, you know. Uh... Yeah, perfect. The, um, I, I we're quickly galloping at a, at, a, at a time here. And so I wanted to ask a, a, a question here around um, uh, housing and, and housing affordability. The one of the principles that we brought to the the, the mayor's uh, housing task force that we we were on was the idea that we need to be addressing um, the the missing middle. That there, there there's often a lot of attention paid, and, and we can we can debate and you can comment on whether enough attention is paid on on low income or or supportive housing. But often uh, missing completely from the the equation is support or housing for 
people who may be fully employed and are part of our workforce, but are having to commute in, to your point, um, from Langley or Delta to, to jobs in Burnaby because they can't afford to live here. And, and there's not a lot of options besides kind of single family homes in, in those areas or condos in the four quad town centers. There's not a lot of town homes or larger family size units um, available. Do you have any thoughts on how we might be able to get some of those, um, some attention paid to, to those issues? And, and what are your thoughts on the idea of, of increasing density um, outside of the town center so we can get some more of those maybe town homes uh, developments uh, that might be more family supporting? Thank you so much, Corey, for asking that question, because that is a question that, you know, uh, is, is, is a personal pain for me. <laughs> I rent here in uh, Burnaby, and again, I am the missing middle. Uh, I, I don't fall into the low, low income uh, category or co-op housing. I am uh, employed and I am the low income, you know, myself and I'm rent and I don't have an option. I can't afford a single detached because I'm a single single mom, single income, uh, but then I am not eligible for low income housing also. So I am that missing middle. So for me, yes, this is this is a personal thing. And I do feel that over the last five years that I've been living here, there are no options available. Um, and that's the reason I've been, you know, uh, for the last three years, I ended up living in a one bedroom with two kids. So it, because the rent is so high and because of the accessibility, it's it's really hard for me to move away from metro town area, even though I would like to, but there are no options. So yes, I would definitely uh, be at the forefront of addressing that issue. Uh, of the middle housing, and I and I do agree. I think moving away from the town centers and uh, making that high density elsewhere in Burnaby is a very good option, uh, and that would really take care of you know my needs and and people you know my friends who are in the same boat, living in this building and living across the street from me in buildings and you know renting um, you know all the young families, and that is the reason again why I am running for city council, because we need those voices on there. We need to raise this concern about the missing middle that, you know, has about affordable housing, about lack of childcare, about active transportation, um, and about, you know, having a more sustainable uh, Burnaby and having a Burnaby where they can live and work uh, and raise their families. Uh, so yes, it, it is my top priority. Okay, well, th thank you for, for those comments and, and for all your comments and taking the time here today to share your thoughts with us. I really appreciate you um, dialing in and, and joining this video and, uh, and taking the time. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Corey, for having me.